So there's a new Monmouth University poll that uh, just came out, and we're beginning to see the movement that I kind of predicted in the polls. So take a look here. The poll finds a virtual three-way tie among Sanders, Warren, and Biden in the presidential nomination preferences of registered Democrats and Democratic-leaning voters across the country. Compared to Monmouth's June poll, these results represent an increase in support for both Sanders, up from 14%, and Warren, up from 15%, and a significant drop for Biden, down from 32%. Wow. So in, in this poll, he's plummeting. Absolutely tanking. Now, what did I tell you? I told you that he has the same problem Hillary Clinton had, which is the idea of Joe Biden is more appealing than the reality of Joe Biden. The idea of Hillary Clinton was more appealing than the reality of Hillary Clinton. So as soon as she went out there and she started campaigning and she started talking, her poll numbers went down. Joe Biden, same thing. As soon as he went out there and started talking, his poll numbers went down and they're continuing to go down. So that's why Biden strategists are actually being a little bit clever and they decided um, we're going to try to hide him from cameras. We're going to do a limited visibility campaign or something. They called it something like that. And they're just hiding him from the cameras and trying to keep that, what I call, default lead that he has. Now, to be clear, in most polls, he still has a lead. Still has a lead. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit, okay? But you have to understand that once you start to see a trend, it very rarely is reversed. So I would be stunned if we didn't see more uh, movement in this direction reflected in all the other polls. And Biden has given zero signs that, you know, he has the capacity to, to reel it back in and start moving in the proper direction. So this could be a good sign. Now, I want to show you the average of polls, um according to Real Clear Politics. So this is all of the national polls. You have uh, Biden at 28.9%, Bernie at 17.1%, Warren at 16.5%. But So that's the, that's the average of the national polls, according to Real Clear Politics. Now, it is true that if something's an outlier, you are supposed to like kind of dismiss it if it's like there's one poll that says one thing and then all the others are saying something else. Which is fair. However, the only counterpoint to that is what I was talking about before, which is this could be a trend now. So, in other words, we could, it could be the case that we're beginning to see the shift that I predicted all along. Now, what I'm happy about is I was wrong about the Kamala Harris thing. Um, and Kamala really kind of imploded, I think, for two reasons. Number one, uh, Tulsi Gabbard just obliterated her on the debate stage and really exposed her. Um, to the point where even a lot of Kamala supporters were like, damn, Tulsi took her down. And then the other thing is, she changed strategies. She was pretending to be like Bernie Sanders, and then, you know, she was creeping her way slowly up the polls, but then as soon as she stopped pretending to be Bernie Sanders, and she started telling, you know, wealthy donors behind closed doors that she's not comfortable with Medicare for all, and she started reversing and released her own plan and is a more centristy, watered-down version of what she was pretending to be, all of a sudden, she reversed and started going in the other direction. So, I'm happy to say that at least at this point, my prediction on Kamala, it being like Bernie and Kamala towards the end, that hasn't materialized. It looked like it was beginning to materialize, and so a lot of people were giving me credit because she started moving up in the polls, but then she stalled, and now she's moving in the other direction. But, who's kind of taking her place? Strangely enough, Elizabeth Warren. Which is, honestly, it's not terrible because... Let's say, hypothetically, came down to Bernie versus Warren in the end. That's so much better than Bernie versus Kamala. Because Elizabeth Warren's definitely better than Kamala, so you'd almost prefer that it'd be more like that than, than having Kamala with a real legitimate shot. Um, but now, having said that, don't get it twisted, Elizabeth Warren is not Bernie Sanders. She's like Bernie Sanders light. She's diet Bernie Sanders. She's like, everything he's for, except make it a little bit shittier, and that's me. And she hasn't been strong on Medicare for All. She hasn't been strong on foreign policy. Um, and there was a story that just broke this week about how she's been meeting with the Democratic establishment and kind of letting them know, like, wink, wink, nod, nod. I'm not, like, I'm kind of with you a little bit. 
So the fact that she's willing to meet with the Democratic establishment, the fact that she's trying to assuage fears about her in the Democratic establishment, that's not a good sign. You want somebody to take them on and, and let them know, like, no, 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 things are going to change, and that's Bernie Sanders. Now, the most important part of this poll is, um, and just a final thing on the specifics, you have Biden at uh, just plus four and Biden at plus seven in an Economist and an Emerson poll, respectively. So again, that trend, you're beginning to see that trend. The trend of like, okay, he was leading by like over 10 points and now it's dropping, dropping, dropping. One poll, now he's basically tied with Bernie and Elizabeth Warren. And then other polls, he's dropped to just plus four and plus seven. So that trend is starting to come. Now, what Monmouth did in reaction to this is embarrassing. So the guy who basically is in charge of the poll released a statement. And in the statement, he basically was saying like, okay, guys, we hear all the chatter about the poll, and we just want to let you know this is the way it works. We're sticking by our methodology. But yes, if something's an outlier, as a general rule, you want to dismiss the outlier and go with what the average says and what the other polls are saying, yada, yada, yada. The reason Monmouth released this poll is because the establishment melted down over this poll. They were like, there's no way Bernie Sanders is, is, you know, tied for first. There's no way Biden slipped that much. And so you had, you know, on CNN, Jeffrey Tubin came out and called it like a rinky-dink poll or something along those lines. And you had um, other hosts saying, no, 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 Biden's definitely still leading. It's definitely still Biden. So I don't know what you're talking about. Don't even pay no mind to this in any in at all. Nate Silver went into, you know, hardcore... Uh, punditry mode, even though he pretends to be data boy and all about the numbers. He was like, this is what's a Bernie leading crazy. <laughs> so what you see is all the fake, very serious people are like, we don't like the results of this poll, so we're going to dismiss it. Now, I want you to compare and contrast that with us. What do I do? I've told you that Biden's had a lead in the polls. I also tell you that my perception of it and my opinion is I think it's probably what I call default support. That he just has the support because it's apolitical people or people who very, don't very closely follow politics. Go, oh, yeah, I guess Biden. I liked him when it was Obama and Biden, whatever. So that's my take on it. But I have admitted, yes, Biden is leading in the polls. It's still on the average. He's still leading in the average. I'm admitting all of that to you. What do they do when a poll comes out and it shows Bernie's tied for the lead? They immediately dismiss it, downplay it, forget it to the point where... The polling company has to release a statement saying, whoa, 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 just relax, everybody, because they were coming after Monmouth. Now, have you seen the them release a statement whenever Biden's leading in the polls? No. Why? Because the establishment's like, yes, this is the order of things that I'm comfortable with and that I'm okay with. So, yes, Joe Biden is leading in the polls. But when it's Bernie and when it's Elizabeth Warren who are tied at the top, they're like, oh, oh, no, this can't be right. Why can't it be right? Why can't it be right? Because <laughs> well, what, you think... It's written in the laws of nature that Biden has to be number one. I got news for you. Back in the 2008 election on the Republican side, you know who was the front runner for a long time? Rudy Giuliani. And then he finished with, like, none of the vote. He was at, towards the bottom. So, it's just, oh, God damn it, man. And we're just beginning to see this. The anti-Bernie stuff in the media, we're just getting started. Because... With Biden now slipping and Bernie being one of the people at the top, they're going to put that propaganda and that fear mongering and, and all of their smear tactics into overdrive because they will not stand for this guy being the likely nominee. They will not stand for it. They're going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at him. So get ready. Get ready. And we have a story in a little bit that really breaks that down in detail of them doing exactly this, but... Now, you know, the trends, we're beginning to see a lot of the trends that I predicted, um, which is Biden massively slipping. I'm happy to say that one of my predictions, at least at this point, is nowhere near true, which is Kamala, even though she was bumped up at the beginning, now she's falling down, I think because of her change of strategy and Tulsi obliterating her. Um, but yeah, Warren is replacing Kamala in that role, which is not the worst thing in the world. So very fascinated to see what happens moving forward.